Hey everyone, it's Izzy and welcome back to my videos. Um, this is not your typical Syrian here. I'm really happy to be making this video on Jackson. Hey, 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 We're gonna look up Jackson's birth chart. I'm really, really excited. So I'm gonna share my screen really quickly. There we go. Hey, okay, I'm gonna move this bar because it's really annoying me. There we go. You can see me, right? You can see me. Um, yeah, let's look at his birth chart. This is Jackson Wang. He just came out with a song, Leave Me Loving You. Let me let me see. Let me add some transits. Um, this is going to be for like today's date. Um, yeah, the moon is there. When did Leave Me Loving You come out? Let me look that up really quick. Because that is became, that is became, um, sorry, that looks so weird. It came out, I want to say, around his birthday, actually, yeah. Um, where did that come from? March 26th, so it was literally just before his birthday. So if we were to see what was happening then, so I'm going to go back um, one more time, and then his birthday was... This was March 26th. So let's see what he was, what happened there. Okay, so I didn't add the transit stamp. Damn y'all. Um, so what you do is you go to natal chart and transits and click show here to show chart. Okay, so Jackson's got, Jupiter was right on his ascendant. Can you guys see that? Can you, hold on. Is there pointer things I can do? Yes. Looky here, Jupiter and the AC. Okay, I'm gonna erase that, but cool, right? Very, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, that means he releases something and it makes him happy. And then we even have Mercury. Where's Mercury? Mercury is pretty dang close to his actual Mercury, and Neptune is close to his Mars. Venus conjunct the Sun. Okay. Well, basically that means he has a lot of major success with something. But let me just take off these transits really quick. Um, and, and the moon was in the seventh house, it was in Leo. Okay, we have a major idea. Let me go back to just his chart because that's what we're talking about today. And if you don't know, Jackson was born, um, I can show you this other one while this loads. Jackson was born March 28th of 94 at 4 a.m. sharp. I don't know where the birth time came from, but apparently it's excellent. And knowing Jackson, it makes so much sense to his character. That's what he looks like. Ooh, I love Jackson. Um, he's been in the group about seven. He was a rapper and dancer. And he used to be a fencer, which is freaking fabulous. He was born on a Monday, because this is the March 94 calendar. March 28th. He was born on a Monday, if you don't know. Monday is ruled by the moon, so that makes people intuitive, compassionate, cooperative, but also secretive, self-centered, and procrastinating. Well, the procrastination part is not his vocabulary, but everything else, you know, I think kind of makes sense. Like, for Jackson, he just seems like a very intuitive guy. When I look at his chart, his chart, we see that he has, I'm gonna zoom into this for you. I hope this isn't hurting your eyes or anything like that. He has like three planets in Pisces. He's got Saturn, he's got Mercury and his Mars. And then in Virgo, he's got, which is also, if you don't know, Virgo can be considered a psychic sign. He's got Virgo, um, his Chiron's there, and I don't know, three degrees, okay. And he's got Jupiter, Pluto, and the North Node in Scorpio. And Scorpio is very, very intuitive as well. So, and then he's got Uranus and Neptune in the 12th house. He's very intuitive, very sensitive as a person, um, despite what he would say about himself. Um, I'm going to exit that out now. I just wanted to show you that and... He's ruled by the moon, so he's very much sensitive, very much artistically inclined, and I just love that so much about Jackson. 
Now, there we go. Now, this chart's loaded, and you can see that here as well. This is the astro.com chart versus the astro-charts.com chart. If you ever want yours, you can decide what aesthetic you like more. Okay. So let's start with his rising. Now, Jackson is an Aquarius rising at 20 degrees. Now, if you want to know a little something about, I'm going to go to this degree thing that I made. So sorry if you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but basically it's based on the degrees. You can watch my astrology video if you want a little bit more insight on that. And basically it takes the sign starting from Aries all the way to Pisces. And since there's 29 degrees, the limit of 29 degrees in astrology, you take those degrees and you basically um, apply traits to them according to the zodiac sign. So because Scorpio is the eighth sign, it's automatically given the eighth degree. And then when it cycles back around from Aries to Pisces again, it gets to the 20th. Now, Jackson, if you noticed, his rising is at 20 degrees. So that's why I'm going and inclining towards the Scorpio. Okay, the degrees of Scorpio. Now, what do these traits have to do with your appearance? First of all... Scorpio makes someone appear very mysterious. If according to these traits, it's about someone deadly. Someone who might come across as, you know, powerful. And we know Jackson does come across as very powerful. I mean, look at him. He's full of this Mars energy, right? Powerful. I mean, look at look at this. Okay, it says Jackson Wing model. Yeah, I know. Um, he's very powerful. But he's also sensitive. Don't let this fool you guys. Don't let that fool you. He's very sensitive at heart. Look, see? <laughs> but yes, when you see him, he looks very powerful. This is from Cartier, I believe. Um, but he just has that look like, what? You know, like, you can't mess with me. And it's even more so because it's an Aquarius. And Aquarius is all about detachments. It's about acquaintances. But when you're talking about describing someone, Aquarius traits are like someone who is very friendly, yes, talkative, but at the same time, they're unique, they're eccentric. So when you look at Jackson, he just has this um, foreign look to him. It's also foreign as well, but when you're describing someone just straight up on appearances, um, usually Aquarius rules, if you actually look, zodiac signs and... Sorry if this hurts or if you can hear my keyboard. Zodiac signs and the body part rulers. Because the zodiac signs rule certain parts of the body. And Aquarius, I believe it says Aquarius rules the calves. So he might have nice feet. I don't know, but um, let me see what else this is. I don't want to just assume he's, you know what I mean? The veins. Um... He's very energetic, yes. Um, legs. Okay, so he's going to have nice legs. Yeah, sure. Okay. But again, when you apply Aquarius traits, which I'm going to go back to this document here with all the degree theories stuff because I love it so much. Someone who is very modern, someone who likes to, to look good, but also in their own way. And Jackson is definitely about looking different, but at the same time, Powerful, sexy, alluring. People really think attractive. Sorry. People literally think he's attractive. And I agree because he's literally attractive to me. I, I love him. Okay. And I love his energy. When you meet Jackson, because, again, his ascendants rule in Aquarius, he's going to come across as different. And you're going to be like, oh, he's got a different energy than me, but I like it. And he's going to be very friendly because um, that's the 11th. Okay. It's about friendships. Uh, if for example, let me just look up Aquarius traits for you just to prove to you to get a little bit more of an idea to help myself out here because I like to do these on the spot. Um, that's what I think. So knowledgeable, future. He's always talking about always staying hungry and always looking towards the future. Humanitarian. Yes, I told you he's very sensitive. I'm just looking at all these random ones. Um, charming, likes new people. Of course, of course. He loves surrounding himself with it. Quirky. Yes, he is very funny and charming. Yes. Uh, let's look more here. 
original. He always likes to be the best original intellectual. He's very smart. He's learned so many languages. When you come across him, you're like, wow. But at the same time, he comes across as a loner at the same time. Like there's something in him. He wants to kind of detach himself because he doesn't want you to know him for all the way through, right? He wants to be kind of a surprise, which I think is kind of interesting. And yeah, I just, I really love that. Let me see if I can add on to this. Eccentric, free-spirited, motivated, logical. Yeah, he's very much like that, very different. I know this says unemotional, but because of the fact that he's got so much Pisces, because of the fact that he's got so much um, rulership by the moon, there's no doubt he's emotional, but he may come across that way when you first meet him. He's going to be very deep. When you first meet him, he loves deep conversations. He loves conversations, excuse me, in general. Okay, but that's the Aquarius. So moving on to his first house, which is in, let's see, first house. It's an Aquarius, Doug says it's rising. Okay. But let's see what this chart says. Nope, I don't want to, nope, okay. Sometimes when I move tabs, I'm like, what the heck is going on? Why is this happening? So first house, Aquarius. And yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to talk about his first house. This has, as you can see here, says the one. Can you see my mouse here? I'm going to do a spotlight. That's better. It's the one. One. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's got Mercury, Saturn, and Mars. So let's start with Saturn since it's the first one. So since that also the first house deals with appearances, it goes along with the rising in a way. Jackson's Saturn is at six degrees Pisces. So if we look here at these traits, I'm going to keep doing this just so I can, you know, do this to show you, hey, I'm not just making all this up. Six degrees is Virgo because why? Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Aquarius, Cancer, Leo. I can't do that. Okay, yes. Virgo. The camera's mirrored, so it's hard to do this. So with his first house and Saturn there. Okay, Saturn is about discipline, hard work, uh, karma. He may feel like when you first meet him, you might be like, oh, my God, it seems like he has such a burden on him. Okay, because look. He kind of looks, you know, but at the same time, when you have Saturn there, like I've noticed with Jaehyun from NCT, I look, I've already done his, you can check out that chart interpretation. I'm going to add timestamps. I know it was a long video. This is probably going to be a long video, so bear with me. When I see that, I see Jackson, you know, people might be like, oh my God, his body's so ripped because, right? And Jackson, <laughs> sorry, I, can I speak really? I mean, I look up to him so much and, you know, I appreciate what he does. So I, I just, it's hard for me to speak. But Saturn there makes him feel like he's had a lot of responsibility ever since he was young. Like he's always had to look after his other siblings. I don't know if he's the youngest or not. I think he is. Um, I think he said so on a podcast. But it's at six degrees. So the six degrees, the Virgo degree, if you have Saturn there, um, it's about hardworking. It's straight up him being very hardworking. But Saturn is in Pisces, which is the opposite of Virgo. So he's hardworking, but at the same time, there's karma with um, Pisces-related things about figuring himself out. Like he's like, damn, you know, who am I? Um, I know he has a phrase where it's like, I am you, you are me, no need to compare in a song, Finneman or Finneman, <laughs> but with Saturn, it's like you have karma related to your appearance, to how your image is. You feel like you're a burden. You are very mature. You appear that way, at least. You're very wise. Um, an Aquarius rising helps with that image, but with Pisces being there, you have karma with your soul. Uh, you have karma with figuring yourself out and just things 
like that. Let me look up Pisces, Saturn traits. I know it may look like I don't know anything, but when you do this in astrology, you're not going to remember everything. So, um, limitations of reality because, oh, okay, now I get it. So, Pisces rules dreams and Pisces also rules the unconscious. So, I think we can take this literal here and say he has karma with following his dreams. And we know this is true because at first he was going to be a fencer for because for the Olympics in 2012, but because he loved music so much, because Pisces also rules music, he has karma there because um, it was hard for him to follow his dreams. And with Virgo there, this Virgo degree, he's like critiquing himself for it because Virgo's like what you perfect. That makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. Let me see what else Virgo can add on to that. Uh, analyze. Yeah, he was analyzing his work. He's like, I just want to be different. And you can see that in him. Now Mercury. Mercury is at 10 degrees Pisces, just a little bit there. So if you look here, I think if you also look, sorry, I'm chewing some ice. Sorry, Jackson, if you're watching this. 10 degrees Pisces, and you have his Saturn, which was at 6. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a Saturn conjunct. That's my computer. I'm so sorry. Oh, really? Saturn conjunct Mercury. That's, yeah, it was just Mercury conjunct Saturn. See here with the four degree orb. Hold on. Let me get rid of this. See, um, that would be that. So Mercury is our thoughts. It's how we interact with our environment. It is our siblings too. So maybe there's karma there because he wasn't going to be the only one in fencing. But when you have um, Saturn junk Mercury, Saturn limits, you know, Saturn puts a damper. He's very critical about himself and his dreams. And, you know, it just... He's got karma, especially from his dad. Maybe his dad critiqued him a lot. Um, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it a lot because I don't like getting into their personal lives because I feel like that's not okay. Um, but yeah, Saturn is like limitations and Mercury's like trying to overcome those those um, limitations because Mercury's thinking, it's acting. It's literally how you communicate. Um, are you walking? Are you driving somewhere? Are you writing something down? Are you listening to music? It's like that kind of thing with communication. So with Mercury being a Pisces, um, Pisces doesn't really necessarily like being in Mercury. So maybe when he comes up with ideas, he's really good. He's very intuitive, but it's in the first house. So uh, he also comes across as really chatty, not gonna lie. And it's also got that 10 degree, okay? He's got Sorry about that, you guys. I'm trying to figure this out. He's got his Mercury at 10 degrees Pisces. So that's like a Capricorn degree because Capricorn's the 10th sign. So he may have uh, things come through and he may feel like they're delayed. He may feel like um, his ideas are full of bad luck. I'm just going off these traits here um, to help me. He may have darker thoughts as well. Um, and when he comes up with an idea for music, for example, because this is in Pisces, so it relates a lot to his musical abilities, um, he may feel like um, they come really late to him, or he has trouble with them, or or they're mostly sad and gloomier ideas, or, but again, or maybe they have to do with, like, being cold, or he feels like his ideas aren't the greatest, again, because Capricorn's very... Mature. Or I can talk about how he has a lot of mature ideas, ideas to talk about, ideas about topics that um, are very mature, are very, you know, not just about like, girls, 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 they love me. <laughs> if you're an OG GOT7 fan, you know. Uh, but yeah, Mercury and Pisces just, it's okay. It's very great for music and intuitive messages and things like that where you feel because he is a very moon oriented person. However, however, I'm saying this with a grain of salt, he may feel like his ideas are shit sometimes, but he will never say that. 
um, he will never admit that he feels like his ideas aren't the greatest. But I will say this is, he's got Jupiter trining. And by trining, I mean it's the same element. So see how it's in Scorpio and Pisces. He's probably going to feel like um, he slowly becomes more optimistic about his ideas. Okay. He's going to slowly be like, yes, okay, I, you know what, I actually like this. And that's good. That is Jupiter's doing that because Jupiter is optimism. But let me look up more about Pisces and Mercury just to get an idea of some traits. Again, not all astrologers are going to know everything. So I just want to, again, very psychic, emotional. Um, yeah, he picks up on things others wouldn't. Very intuitive. Very intuitive. Very creative mind, perfect for the music industry. Uh, Mercury. And again, with Mercury in the first house, maybe he feels like his ideas come um, to him pretty rapidly because Aries is the natural ruler of the first. Um, maybe they come naturally to him. His ideas are mostly based on his experiences, his emotional experiences, because Pisces is emotions. And then we've got Mars at 16 degrees. So the 16th degree is the Cancer degree in astrology. So the, right here. So Mars, what is Mars in Pisces? Mars is actions. So it's different from Mercury because Mars isn't just talking. Mars is like usually aggression when you're angry or when you want to work out or things like that. You can definitely tell he works out with Saturn and Mars, both in the first. Um, he definitely keeps up with his body and he's very much in tune with his body, literally with Pisces there in tune. Um, Mars is also your way of leading people, of being a leader, things like that. So when I look up Pisces, Mars is also sexual aggression, but I don't want to get into that because that's kind of weird. So Expressing things with love and, ex love and passion, okay? That's really much him, okay? Stronger spiritually than physically. Da, da, da. Avoiding anger and passion before they can drown you. Imaginative earth rule lover, okay? Um, passive aggressive, ah, okay, that makes sense. That's what I'm reading these. Impressionable energy. Artistic passion. Oh, it's also your passions. I almost forgot um, that part. Okay. Okay. So he may feel like music is his escape. He also is very passionate in his music. And at 16 degrees, he feels like music is his home. He's whoever he's dedicated to, um, such as the fans or maybe a lover or family, especially family. He feels like they're very close. Um, again, he's very close with his music, with his actions. He does it based on the public. He does it based on um, his fans. He does it based on the people he loves, like family, okay? Um, and he really takes his origins seriously when he takes actions, like where he comes from, um, whether it be like literally um, Hong Kong or where he comes from in his career, like how he, he's very much about his roots, very much, okay? So when he takes actions, he remembers that. He's like, okay, so this is where I came from. Um, and he, he kind of really expresses that in his music with Stay Hungry and all that. Moving on to his second house in Aries. Or is it in Aries? Let me see. It's very close to being in Aries. It's in Pisces, I bet. Yes, see, 28 degrees Pisces. You know why I determined that? Because if you look really closely, you will see this line is still hitting Pisces. This line here. I'm going to get you a spotlight. This line here. I'm sorry, when? Hold on a second, you guys. I'm going to check my internet. Or I don't know what's happening. Um, or why. Okay, never mind. Okay, we're good. See how that line's hitting Pisces? Just barely, but it is. That. Okay. He's got his second house there. So what am I saying? Well, Pisces in the second, I know it's not very much, but he's got his son and Venus there. So when it talks about the second house, it's his values, 
what he deems to be important. So he's got the sun and Venus there. So the sun is his ego. It's his identity. Um, it's his self-expression. Like, hi, my name is Jackson Wayne from China. Like that thing. So hold on a second. You gotta stay hydrated. Cause you got, you can't stay hungry. You gotta stay thirsty, right? <laughs> but he's got his son at six degrees Aries. Cause he was born at the start of Aries season. So six degree again is the Virgo degree. I'm seeing a pattern here. So what does that mean? Well, he's critical on himself. And also the second house is also his voice. So I'm kind of wondering, how does he have such a deep voice? Well, maybe it's literally because the second house is in Pisces and Pisces is very deep and intuitive. So maybe it can mean you have a deep voice, but his voice is very raspy too. And he's got the sun and um, so Aries is a little bit like that. Okay, so with the sun being in Aries, okay, it's exalted, meaning his social expression is easy for him. It's easier for him to be talkative. No wonder he's got an um, Aquarius rising. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm Jackson Lincoln China, you know, I'm doing whatever. Um, he feels very, very um, comfortable with just expressing himself. That's not a problem. That's probably why he was okay with changing careers so quickly. He's like, well, this is what I want to do, and I'm very comfortable with it. This is me. I'm going to do it. Um, very much so. It's not hard to um, to go on details with Aries Sun people. But with Aries Sun people in the second house, he really values his identity. Okay? He really values who he is. And he's very critical on that, the, the sixth degree. Okay? He perfects it. It's one of his prized possessions. So if we go back to the Virgo degree, he works hard. Okay? To, to have this self-expression. Uh, you know what I mean? And he really just cares. He's got Venus there too. What does that mean? Venus is at 23 degrees Aries and it's in his second house. So that's awesome. So what does that have to say about him as a person? Um, first of all, that's double Aries energy, I believe. Actually, no, it's not. Um, but that's also Aquarius. The 23rd degree is the Aquarius degree. If we go to Aquarius. So he's going to really want to be original when it comes to fashion. Okay. He's going to want to be loud in the fashion department. Why? Because um, Venus is love and beauty and fashion. And what did he have? He has so many deals with Cartier, so many deals with Finneman, so many idea, so many, um, sponsors he's with okay i can't even remember them all okay that's how many he's got and with it being a taurus so sec i'm sorry with it being the second house which is naturally ruled by taurus venus being there is at home okay he is he values um his music taste his food taste his fashion taste he values it like hell okay so that's why team way means so much to him that's why um his fashion brands mean so much to him. That's why everything that makes him comfortable matters so much to him. Okay. And he really takes into consideration his community. The 11th degree is like a community. Okay. Um, I know these look kind of nervous. It's about future things. Okay. He, he wants to take fashion to the next level, to the future and make it modern. And um, he values what that goes. And it can be anything really that he values, like music, especially. He wants his music to relate to people because Aquarius is like a people, okay? It's humanity. So he wants his music to really have value to the public. And I get that. It really means a lot to me. So let's move on to the third house, which happens to be in Taurus. And you might be wondering, okay, Izzy, but you skipped a sign. Isn't Aries supposed to be the third? Well, the problem is he's got interception. And I don't know if you can see this, but see how the lines are not hitting these, this Aries here. So, um, I'm just going to show you this. Okay. See how Aries is here. Okay. See how Aries is here. See how this line is hitting Pisces. Okay. You think the next line would hit Aries, but it doesn't. It hits Taurus. That's what I'm trying to do to show you. Okay. So his third house is actually in Taurus right here see 
escapes Aries because he has an interception, which means it's a problem he deals with. So let's talk about the interception before we move on to the third house because his interception is the second and the eighth. So what he values versus what he values from other people. So the second house is Taurus like energy. Eighth house is his power and control, the Scorpio. So his interception is Aries and Libra because as you can tell, Aries is not fitting in between with these divisions. Neither is Libra because it's, it's the exact opposite. So if we look up Aries and Libra interception, okay, this is important in astrology. Um, it's the energy you don't have but wish to have, okay? So he feels like um, his Aries energy and his Libra energy is lacking. So his expression, his being self versus people pleasing. Okay. It's very hard, very hard. Okay. So basically it's saying here, when you have Aries intercepted, you feel a lack of self-esteem or entitlement. And they may have, he may have been left out on a lot of things and never felt like he had his own way, which is probably why he stopped with fencing because he wasn't expressing himself. He had to people please his parents because they were, um, they were Olympian athletes. He wasn't, um, really in love with that and he was had a lot of that in the seventh house intercepted is he yearns for having a relationship but never gets to experience it with well being a k-pop idol i understand that because you're not allowed to have relationships with your contracts well now he's not really an idol idol anymore um got seven's contract ended and they didn't renew it because they wanted to pursue their own creative freedom which is great um I'm going to do second and eighth house and see where this comes to play. So, okay. Second and eighth house interception. Okay. Yeah, so literally the second house is like childhood support and things like that. And the eighth house is the opposite. Okay, the eighth house is change. So it's like, I want to, so because he's got a second house Aries, his self, his self, okay, he wanted to, what he valued in life was expressing himself, but, um, and having that, you know, the interception is because he had, you know, such, you know, athletic parents, he felt like, oh, you know, I can't really be me. I have to follow them in their footsteps. So the Libra is in interception with the eighth house is changing from the athlete, which is Aries. Okay. That's where he, his parents gave him the most value. His dad, the son is right here, critical and the Venus, the mom. Okay. And he's got an opposition here with the sun and moon. You know, it's between music and being an athlete because Libra is the musician, the artist. And the moon's there. He intuitively felt he had to leave the athlete, okay, his expression in the athletic field to become and pursue art and music. And that was the change, the transformation in the eighth house. I did it! <laughs> okay, I felt really good to say. So let's now move on to the third house in Taurus. So now to understand why the interception is there, okay? The third house is ruled by Taurus, so this can mean. This can talk about his roommates, this can talk about his siblings, this can talk about his members that he's around um, a little bit, and it can also talk about where he grew up. So with you, when you have a Taurus there, he doesn't have any planets there, but the energy um, rules his Venus, okay? Because Taurus rules Venus. You can watch my video on astrology to understand these. I go really in depth and I have timestamps for you. Taurus rules Venus. If we look at his Venus, it's in the second. So this is going to be heavily impacted here. His way of communicating his school life, because it's also elementary school, high school life, was very humble. Maybe he didn't care so much. And I think he did talk about in a podcast where he really didn't care so much. He was more focused on the art. Um, and that's Taurus, you know, very Venus-like, artsy, kind of lazy, not really caring about school. But we'll do it and be chill. He was a chill student. Um, 
Taurus third house can also mean you had chill neighbors. Okay, straight up. And how many degrees is that? Because this tells you three. So three degrees is Gemini. Okay, they're going to be very communicative people. The members are going to be very chill with him. His roommates are going to be very chill with him where they were. Things like that. Now his IC, this is an important point because this is bold, has that one degree Gemini. The IC is your home environment. It's how you grew up as a kid. So in Gemini, it means he grew up around a fireman that was always loud, always in your face, like Jaehyun almost. But Jaehyun's was a later degree. Um, yeah. It's like loudness, you know, constant chatter, constantly playing movies and stuff in the background while you're just chilling. That's Gemini, okay? Having to have a lot of interaction, lots of conversations, blah, blah, blah. But at one degree, it's the Aries degree, okay? Because it starts with the first sign. So if we go all the way up to the Aries, we'll see that um, maybe there was um, a lot of sports. Yes, his family was very much um, always talked about sports, Olympian fencing, right? And if we look here, we see, yes, Jackson's a fencer, you know, um, that's all his family talked about was sports. And that was their main focus in the family was sports. And the fourth house is also here. The line is Gemini too. So yeah. Now his fifth house is, see this line here? See how the interception kind of works? It's also in Gemini. So he's got a lot of Gemini energy, which is maybe why I'm attracted to him so much. <laughs> and it starts at 26 degrees. And 26 is the Taurus degree. So when we talk about his fifth house, what he likes to do for fun. Oh, sorry, let me talk about the fourth house still. The fourth house is what you like to do to chill out. Um, Gemini rules Mercury. Okay, so if you have any empty houses, meaning there's no planets there like Jackson, you want to look at the sign and what it rules. So for Jackson, Mercury, because it's Gemini, and his Mercury is in Pisces. So he's going to want to relax by not, you know, by just chilling, by maybe swimming in water, being around water, because that's Pisces. Um, sleeping is a great thing. Watching TV, getting lost in something. Okay, that's how he wants to chill. Now, how he wants to have fun, you look at Mercury again, because that's where... Same thing. How he wants to have fun is engaging conversations and talking about deep stuff. Um, traveling to foreign places because Pisces is foreign. Um, surrounding himself at the beach. And then, you know, we've seen this in his MV, Dawn of Us. Yeah. Um, Dawn of Us is literally him at the beach having fun. See? Um, that's his aesthetic. <laughs> Very Piscean. Okay. Very Piscean. But yeah, that's how he likes to have fun, you guys. He freaking loves to be engaged in something. He needs an activity, but something that's going to um, show that, yeah, he's still working hard at it. You know, it's still something that engages him. But at the same time, he gets lost in the real world. It makes him feel like, yes, I'm not working, but I am. Moving on to the sixth house, which is in Cancer. Um, see how that line hits? See this line? hitting cancer and because there's no planets there you want to look at the ruler of that sign so since cancer's there you'd look at the moon because cancer rules the moon he has his moon in the eighth house of libra so his moon sign is in libra at 12 degrees what is that about him what does that say about him well it says that um he's very charming um very much into the music very very deep he feels things at such a deep level, he can't explain it. Um, and he intuitively, he picks up on things um, and, when he's, and he knows what's up, okay? He knows what's up. At the 12th degree of Pisces, let's take a look. So the 12th degree is actually, I think it's one of the best degrees you can ever have. I'm sorry, let me just, I don't know what's going on with this. Okay, I'm going to go back into it. I'm so sorry. Um, my thing is acting weird. Anyway, the 12th degree is about buried wealth or treasure. So this is like one of the most pivoting points. So it can actually be why he's so wealthy because he followed his intuition. 
Okay, straight up. That gave him wealth. The universe is like, congratulations, honey. You got yourself some wealth. And I'm like, okay, okay. But also remember this is intercepted. And like I talked about, you know, the sixth house is about work. So and because I'm going back to the moon, his work really needs to be deep and emotional and something that people can connect to. Um, and it's his comfort zone. Working is his comfort zone. You ever notice how he talks about how, and sometimes I'll see interviews, he's like, yeah, this is the first vacation I'm getting all year. And this is the only vacation I'm getting all year because work makes him comfortable. Okay. That's his comfort zone. For some of you, you might be weirded out by that, but he, he actually feels valuable. He feels comfortable just working all the time. Okay. So moving on to his seventh house, which is in 20 degrees, Leo, by the way, if you didn't know, it's the exact opposite of his rising. So and since there's no planets there besides Chiron, you want to look at the seventh house ruler. It's also his shadow side. It's also the traits um, he looks for in a future wife, knowing him. So let's talk about this wife. Not too much, though, because um, that's private stuff and I feel very much like I'm intruding on something if I do. I'm just going to straight up just say like how we could meet her and what he looks for in someone and that's all I'm going to do because I don't really want to ruin that for him. So starting with the seven and Leo, he looks for someone who's confident in themselves. Am I really surprised? I'm not really surprised at all. Someone who's confident, someone who who's very fashionable. Does that really surprise me either? No. <laughs> he's got Venus in the second house. Venus is the wife, knowing he's interested in women, okay? Um, he's looking for someone who not only looks good, but is confident and prideful and really um, just grateful and giving at the same time. If we also look at Leo, Leo rules the sun, so um, he attracts people who, again, are confident and maybe a little critical, but, you know, they're very great at conversation. They're fun. Leo rules fun, okay? They're fun people. They're entertainers, probably. Um, things like that. But, however, his seventh house also has Chiron, this key, at three degrees Virgo. So, what does that mean? In his relationships, and this can mean anything, um, he has some emotional wounds there. It's very hard for him. And by relationships, I don't mean romantic either. It's literally about businesses. Um, it can be a shadow. So his shadow is... Um, so since we're talking about Leo, and the shadow would be negative traits. So his shadow side, his enemies, are going to be self-centered. They're going to be um, maybe narcissistic. Uh, things like that. Um, where... Where they always want attention. It's like, geez, that's actually kind of rude. You know, they might be cocky. Very narcissistic. Whereas he comes across as, you know, detached and very giving and loves people. But shadow side's very much like, I want to do this for me. This is my time to shine. You can take that as good as bad. But, but with Chiron retrograde, he's got emotional issues, emotional wounds when it comes to being humble, when it comes to relationships. And um, criticizing them a lot. You might be like, oh my gosh, you know. Blah, 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 blah. Let me look up, by the way, Chiron and Virgo. Just to get an idea of what I'm looking for. Because, um, oh. Oh, so he feels unworthy in relationships. He feels like he doesn't need a relationship. Um, or not necessarily need, but he feels like when he's in a relationship, he doesn't deserve it. Like, oh no, because Virgo's humble, okay? And they will never admit that they want something unless they really, really want it. And with Chiron retrograde, he really reflects on his relationships. And he's like, I don't know if I deserve this. Um, and that might be why he's, he could be single most of the time. Because he doesn't know or feel like he deserves it. And before he can be in a relationship, he needs to be confident in that. And that's why Leo's on his seventh house. So let's talk about Virgo being in the eighth. See how that line is just barely touching? Virgo? And I talked about the interception with Libra. Um, Virgo is his eighth house at 28 degrees. Okay. And it's got his moon. So Virgo is Mercury. So again, we already talked about Mercury. 
but he talks he he likes deep conversations he just fucking does i've never met him not wanting to say i'm blessed i'm blessed um and what i also really like about his mercury is um you'll hear him always talk about how blessed he is and pisces is literally about um what am i trying to say here oh his self-worth, he feels very blessed. So he's going to say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And everything, I'm Jackson, I'm blessed. I'm like, I fall in love with that, okay? And I think the more he does that, the more he's going to manifest success because Pisces is about like blessings in a way it's very spiritual. I feel like when he talks, he, he's aware of the law of attraction and he really is cautious of what he says. So he's like, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And the eighth house shows you're aware of what you say, but you also want, he might be very critical of himself too and, and how he's deep. But ultimately, let me look up Virgo 8th house just so I can get a good idea. Yes, yeah. Virgo. That'd be the Korean way. <laughs> um, oh, he's very concerned about his health and he worries all the time about change and death. Okay, so yeah, he's very much, very much practical in relationships, very much about, hey, I can do this for you. I want to help you. Um, I want to take care of you, but at the same time, um, I really want to watch myself. I'm really nervous about this. I'm really nervous about that. Um, the eighth house is also death, so he could die in a Mercury-like way. I don't want to predict that, honestly, but um, being careful around car accidents, being careful with things related to Virgo. Let me see what I've got here. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But, yeah, Virgo in the eighth house very critical about intimacy, maybe hard for him to be intimate, but once he is, he's very humble, he's very grateful, he's very helpful and very practical towards his relationships, okay? Um, he would, he literally, he, oh, okay, so he's intimate in his songs. Mercury rules music in a way where it's communication, right? It's art, it's um, a song, you hear it, you're listening to a song, reading, um, yes, so, with Jackson, his songs are his way of being intimate because um, it's like a love letter to you, uh, things like that. And we've already talked about his Libra moon in the eighth house. So because it's intercepted, we have to skip over it and move on to his ninth house in Scorpio. So with Scorpio, he um, his ninth house, ninth house was travel foreign. So when he changed... When he moved, it literally transformed his entire fucking life, okay? He's got three planets there, and they're very important. So let's start with Jupiter being in Scorpio. So Jupiter in Scorpio isn't really the best there because Jupiter is retrograde. So he, at first, when he was younger, he might have felt very pessimistic, like, I can't do this, you know? It's at the 13th degree of Aries. So, okay, he's going to feel horrible, but it makes him a great leader, okay? Because Aries is the leader because it's the first sign. So when I look at this chart, I see he was definitely destined to move, especially because he's got Pluto in the North Node there. Pluto is retrograde. So again, he didn't want this change, but he was like, you know what, fuck it. This is going to be great for me. And Pluto in the ninth house always suggests that you move to another country. Okay, so if you have Pluto in the ninth house and you haven't moved to another country, do it because I'm. it's in your destiny. And literally the North Node is conjunct that, and the North Node is your uncomfortable zone. So moving to another country, changing his life around, was very uncomfortable for him, as it would be for most people, I'm sure. And the North Node, again, is um, your direction in life. So with it being at Scorpio, he was meant to change people's lives um, in another country by making music um, intuitively. Okay, Scorpio's intuitive in deep ways, in profound ways, in powerful ways. So being a leader, you know, things like that. Um, with the 24th degree of Pisces, I can see that with the North Node. He was meant to definitely lead a spiritual path. And by spiritual, I don't mean he's got to teach everyone this new religion and shit. No. He was meant to be this leader to help change the world and make a new consciousness with his music. Pisces is music, remember? He's destined to create music that would change. Um, Jupiter is optimism as well. And Pluto is the change. It's the transformation, the death. So because it's so close to his MC, that's the career, okay? He was meant to do this in his career. He was meant to change 27 degrees of Gemini. Um, 
change from living into a small town into another country, which is Korea. And I don't know if he's in Korea now or if he's went back to China. I think he went back to China, Hong Kong, where he came from. But because I don't know if you can see this, see how close Jupiter, Jupiter's not really that close, but see how close Pluto and the North Node is together? He was meant to move. The ninth house is foreign. It's long distance travel. Okay, he was meant to move. He's meant to tour. He's meant to go around the world because Jupiter's also opportunities. So the more he travels to different countries, the more he's going to have great experiences and um, success in his career as well. And um, Pluto is in the sign of Pluto because Scorpio is Pluto. And the fact that it's in the house of Scorpio, he's in his power, man. Um, he, he's the most powerful when he's going after his dreams. Um, and that's also Scorpio having that so close to his career he works really hard and people are like, whoa, you're so powerful. And we look up to you and give you this respect and honor. And I feel that same. Way. Um, but most of the time people will say Pluto and Scorpio is like very pessimistic, but with Jackson, I feel like he's gotten over that because of all these changes he's implementing. And the more he changes and the more he reflects on his opportunities, the better. Um, Cause Pluto and um, Jupiter are retrograde. So what that tells me is it's the things he looks upon and reflects on later. The retrograde planets are planets that you have lessons in. So he has lessons in being optimistic and traveling. And we've seen this in his career. And with Pluto, he has lessons with change. And at first, I know he didn't really like it, but he's like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And that North Node being there made him feel like this is the direction. Now his South Node is 24 degrees. Taurus. So that means he's most comfortable. He was most comfortable being humble, staying the same in small town areas. Moving on to his midheaven, which is one degree Sagittarius. He was meant to be famous. He was meant to be a famous leader. Why do I say that? Sagittarius is fame, especially on the midheaven. It's traveling foreign countries because it rules the ninth naturally. So that ninth house stellium of his, he's meant to, that's why he's so great at different languages too because he's been so well traveled and so well rehearsed. Um, it's meant for fame. It's meant for foreign things. Um, and with the first degree, he's meant to be a leader. He's meant to be a CEO. He's meant to be um, having, you know, power. Okay. He's a very powerful man. He's got a lot of Mars energy. Okay. He was meant to have success as a famous person as a leader okay that's the 10th house a dancer Sagittarius is all like so dancing and making music okay that's just what he is now let's move on to the 11th house which is also in Sagittarius so the 11th house okay that's your friend group it's the fans they're all mostly foreign fans and they're all mostly um his co-workers as well this is co-workers in a way and his friends they're mostly very um, adventurous. They're very, there might be, he has a lot of foreign um, foreign acquaintances, foreign friends, foreign networking things. That's why he's got all those brands. Like if I looked up here, Jackson Wang brands, um, Pepsi, Adidas. Um, let me see all his brands. Fendiman, obviously. Um, Vivo, Cartier, okay. This is where I'm getting this from, by the way. Multiple brands from all these different countries. Fendi's in Italy, by the way. And Pepsi's in China. Um, Cartier, I don't know where Cartier is France, because it's a French name. So literally networking in foreign countries. And let me see what degree that's in. The 26th degree. Yeah, that's fashion. 26 is brands. It's Venus, okay? It's Taurus. In the 11th house of fans. So the, he's going to have very adventurous fans, fans who are ride or die, fans that will have so much energy, um, things like that. Okay. And lastly, we have his 12th house in Capricorn. So in his 12th house, he's got Neptune conjunct Uranus. Can you see that? So the 12th house is basically um, what you don't know about yourself that you're trying to figure out. So with Jackson, 
I feel like in a Capricorn way, he's still figuring himself out through his work. He's still trying, you know, new ways with his work. Why am I saying that? Neptune is conjunct Uranus. Okay, that's his art, conjunct change. Constantly changing his art to be better and more innovative. And if you don't know, his chart ruler is his Uranus sign because Aquarius rules Uranus. So with Uranus at 25 degrees, he wants to change the way his music is um, and how he expresses himself because Aries is the self. And Neptune is, he gets lost in figuring this in his work. He gets lost in his work and um, because it's at the 23rd degree um, to please the fans as the 11 is the public. Um, 23 degrees is Aquarius. He wants to please the public, okay, with his art. And so he constantly changes it for the better. Now, another thing I want to show you guys with his chart is I'm going to see if there's any um, asteroids where his par fortune is. I'm going to see um, where his asteroids are. First, I'm going to do these. Par fortune. Par fortune is 15 degrees Leo. He was meant to be famous in the sick for his work. 15 degrees is for expressing himself. 15 degrees is, let me think about that one. Gemini, through his music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The vertex point is in the seventh house of Virgo, of Leo, but it's in Virgo at 13 degrees. So again, expressing himself, he's got so much Aries energy, so fucking much of it. By expressing who he is, he meets up with his destiny. Okay, Lilith, the last one, Lilith is at Aries at the 28th degree. So he hates, in a way, he feels really bad for expressing who he is, but the 28th degree is like criticism from maybe family or a community you feel really close to for being yourself in the second house of value. So what he values in himself or what he values he feels about himself, okay, for taking care of himself, he feels sometimes bad for it. I think I've heard him say that too, by the way. Okay, but these other ones, these other um um are really cool let me count those one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's see how many we get here because these are like the asteroids of good luck and fortune that's a car i'm sorry um okay he's got regula regulus conjunct chiron see that it's at 29 degrees leo and it's so close to being in virgo and the chiron's barely in um Leo. So, in Virgo. So, what does that say about him? Well, if we look up Regulus, um, astrology, constellation, Raphael, Archangel Raphael is closely associated with him. And um, it's, a, it's literally about success, um, Mars and Jupiter energy, uh, Fond of power, yes, desires of command. Yes, he's a very powerful man. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> um, let's see the other one he has. Um, so he's got all these asteroids in his third house. So definitely a community is going to give him success. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me think. Um <laughs> He's got the galactic center in his 11th house, so he's meant to have a lot of life-changing transformations through his fans and career. But basically, that's all I'm getting for Jackson Wang and his birth chart. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to see more information about his chart. He was born on a full moon, by the way. So let me talk about that. Mercury's in nine aspects is what this is saying. So his music is very important. And... Uh, yeah, his career is very important too. But the full moon means it's the opposite of your sun sign. So what does that mean? Well, when you have a, your sun opposite your moon, um, it has to do with your parents too. But the way you express yourself is completely different from how you feel. So the way he wants to be is expressing who he is as a person. But how he feels is he's got to people please. And that's really hard for him. Okay, that's, that's the at energy. But he... That's what that means. And he's got everything distributed equally. Yeah, this is a really cool website. But I just want to conclude this. 
can I talk? I want to conclude this. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope I gave you a better understanding of Jackson Wayne. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.